Hey there, everybody. P. Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Monday Night Must See TV with the Hudson Valley Squares. We've got a lyric episode tonight for you. But before we get started, let me introduce the crew we've got in the house. Lynn Versace. Nick Franco's back. Rich Catino's back. Ryan Scow and Sydney Taylor. Welcome, everybody. Woo! What up? What's up, guys? Monday hey. night. We're talking lyrics. This is kind of like part two of an episode I did with Martin Popoff a couple of weeks ago where we talked about uh, on that episode our 10 favorite lyric bands. In other words, the 10 bands that we like the most because of the lyrics. So my five today are basically going to be a repeat of what I said two weeks ago, but more importantly, what we want to hear from all of you. So uh, basically, it's a loose concept. Basically, we picked five bands that we really dig the lyrics for for whatever reason. And we might have some folks who may get a little intricate with why, and we may even read off some lyrics today, but uh, we'll go one at a time and we'll, we'll each do one pick and then we'll go to number four, number three, two, and one. So uh, Lynn, we'll have you kick us off with your fifth choice for today or your first choice, however we want to oh, do we it. Are just, we just have to clarify, because I screwed up last time. Am I just doing one right now? Yes. All right. Uh, this is in no numerical order. Um, but Judas Priest, Judas Priest is my number, whatever. I, I didn't, I didn't really put them in, in numerological order, but I mean, I love Judas Priest for the lyrics and not just his voice and not just what it makes me feel like, but I love everything they sing about. I love how it makes me feel. And, uh, that's my first one. Any particular era or batch of albums where you think, um, I like sad wings a lot. Um, I, you know, again, I know people make fun of Turbo Lover. I'm, I'm not like a fan of, of those lyrics so much, but um, Sad Wings is probably one of my favorite albums from them. Um, you know, I mean, I just like everything they sing about. I just, I don't know. I think I'm going to go with Sad Wings. Okay. Very cool. 70s Priest was poetic. Like, I didn't stay that way, but when they started, like, the first five albums, probably. Yeah. Great lyrics back then. Really. It was, to me, there's and that, a big difference between it, the it, stuff and the lyrics. It transitioned to the heavy, hardcore painkiller, you know, and now it's like I'm just angry. So painkiller comes on, I just want to kill, you know. So it's, yeah, it definitely transitioned with me through the years. But definitely Priest is in my top five. Cool. Nick Franco, welcome back. Hello. All right. So, uh, yeah, this was a, uh, a topic near and dear to my heart because I think uh, I think lyrics are very important. I think it's it's funny when you talk to people about music, um, sometimes it's a um, like a delineating factor. There's people that uh, there's people that can listen to harsh vocals. There's people that that's where they, they can't they can listen to clean vocals. But then there's people that are like, oh, I don't care about the lyrics. It doesn't ever affect me. I don't read them. I don't care. And I find that pretty uh, odd because I think if that was the case, then why would they even have them? Why would you even have singers if you didn't care what was being sung? Obviously, some bands are more for fun and lighthearted and, and or, or someone like our satanic bands are just singing about goats and fire and blood. And, you know, it, it, it's all kind of just fits. But me, I love when a band makes me feel something with the lyrics as well as the music, um, especially not being a musician. Um, the ways that the music hits you, uh, a lot of times the words uh, really matter. So I definitely like heavier, more, um, I guess, gravitas in my lyrics. So the first one I'm going to go with is a little bit, I've mentioned her before. It's a little unusual, uh, not quite strictly in the realm of rock and metal, but she's got enough of, a feet, of her feet in both camps that I think it counts. But I'm going with Miss Chelsea Wolfe. Um, the solo artist who has made several albums now, um, she ha she can turn the, the the trauma that she has endured in her life, um, the details of which I obviously don't know. You get only from the lyrics, but this woman can sing about personal trauma in such a way that it's just you read the lyrics, you're like Jesus Christ, like <laughs> like she really really just hits hard with uh, you know uh, particular types of trauma and particular types of darkness. And, um, you know, it really, I'd say her lyrics are probably like, every time I read them, I'm like, I discover something else about them. Um, so I'm gonna just read you one snippet of um, They'll Clap When You're Gone, which I think is the saddest song ever written. Um, 
I can feel the walls closing in and I don't want to talk anymore. Wish I could quietly slip away and leave you here with no void. The only reason I stay is to care for you. Everything else in me has atrophied and I am cold and painless now. I want to live, but I feel nothing. When can I die? When can I go? When will I be free? When will I know? When can I run? My legs are bound. When can I go? When can I go? Uh, was born a blackened seed in the wild and I never was a child. I was pulled right out of the sea and the salt that never left my body. Um, you know, I'm not going to keep going on, obviously, but but you get, you get you get the sense. She's <laughs> yeah, holy yeah, shit. I like miserable, deep. That's I, want, I, want I was just going to say, I do not like that at all. I'm sorry. That <laughs> when will I die? When will I die? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That and I'm, and not... you know what? Like, I, I always choose like the worst fucking thing to say. That's just my thing. But like, you get into her lyrics. It's not just when can I die. It's she gets so deep. I just pulled that out because you know you could read her entire discography. Um, this woman can write some lyrics, and I like misery and sadness. Oh, I'm sorry for whatever she went through. That's terrible. Yeah. Oh, oh, everybody, everybody got a smile there after I that. Drop. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I don't even know what to say. I'm yeah. not familiar with this person, so I have to check it out. Yeah, she's she's amazing. What a voice! Ugh. I think I have a question for you, my friend. Did you oh, ever listen right? to her? This is like a totally off, off the cuff. Uh, her collaborative album with the band Converge from Boston. I haven't yet. Write no. that down. Put that on the yeah, list. It's good. You're gonna love it. You're getting freaking yeah. awesome. Because you're a much bigger fan of her than I am. But I love that album. It's it's a good mesh of both of them. Yeah, um, and Lynn and Sydney. I think I think her her lyrics are definitely uh, kind of for written from a woman's perspective and unique things that women go through and oh boy just amazing 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 so. i'll have to check her out yeah i'm not i'm not super familiar either mm. and it gets more miserable and sad from here guys except for with one exception <laughs> <laughs> that's the high water that's the high water mark that's the brand of sunshine okay <laughs> rich Catino, what do you got first all right so my five is comprised of my five favorite bands. So oddly enough, not oddly enough, but it makes sense that I think the lyrics are as important as the music. So my five, I'm going to start with Kiss. Um, I always felt that they were, well, they're always about life, life experience, love, uh, believing in yourself, rock and roll. Uh, sometimes it's lighthearted, sometimes it's a little bit deeper. Um, so they're always, they've always been more than just the show. They've been about the lyrics too, and the music. You know, look at, uh, look at The Elder, or even Unmasked, or Dynasty, you know? The, odd, the oddballs in the catalog. So they've always done a, a new good mix of a variety in their lyrics, and I always have liked those things, especially, I'm gonna read a couple of lyrics too. I'm gonna take something from their hair and metal era from the 80s, even though I don't, you know, I don't like using that word, but it is what it is glam metal rich it's glam metal it's glam you're right hard rock metal i'm wearing my glam Tara shirt as well so but i'm gonna go with lyrics from one of my least favorite albums from the era from crazy nights and the ballad reason to live you guys know it very well great song kind of sappy but deep and it shows that these guys know how to write great songs not just fun songs you know so out of love, there's nobody around. All I hear is the sound of a broken heart. Out of time, no more waiting for you. Now the hurt is through and a new day is gone. So they do write some, you know, pull out your heartstrings ballads. That end, another favorite I'll throw out there too, from Lick It Up, A Million to One. Guys on that one. Another great one, that's a Paul Stanley, Vinnie Vincent song. So that one is, uh, baby, now that you've made up your mind, I'm going to let you go if that's what it takes to show love is blind. Pretty awesome. So two of my favorite songs from that era, even one of them came from one of my least favorite albums, but Kiss, definitely in my top five. Kiss from first album up to the reunion tour. After the reunion tour, the farewell tour, people in other people's costumes and makeups, that's where I checked out. So 73, 74, up to, what is that? 2000, 98, somewhere around there, 99? Yeah, something like that, yeah. Yeah. So I yeah. something new every day. I had no idea Kiss was like your number five favorite band. Yeah, been into them since I heard them first, which was, I'm gonna say Love Gun, Rock and Roll Over, around that time period. Yeah. 
vintage days. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Mr. Scow. All right, so I was uh, I was debating how to go about this. I kept picking out five albums, five bands, and I'm like, nah. <laughs> I want to do something different. So, uh, so what I decided on was this: uh, go back to 1970, February 13th, 1970, uh, Friday the 13th. First Black Sabbath album comes out. How does that album open up? It's got church bells. It's got rain. It's got thunder in the distance. It's very theatrical. It's very, you know, movie-like, cinematic. Uh, and the band was take the name was taken from a Mario Bava movie with Boris Karloff. So right away, that connotation of heavy metal and horror movies cemented day one hour one and people often describe you know you, you know how do you describe metal up you're like well it's like a soundtrack to a horror movie everybody's heard that eight zillion times uh but that promise hasn't always come true in the lyrics i think because a lot of bands have lyrics that you know like song the song well it's kind of horror movie themed but to write in the word you know to say concept album it's kind of like a it makes it seem pretentious or like a little overbearing you know like oh you know it's like a little hoity-toity but uh, there are some bands that write albums that start to finish kind of tell a story, you know, and uh, I love horror movies. Obviously, it goes very hand in hand with metal. So even though a lot of death and black metal, rightfully so, gets a reputation as being kind of goofy with the lyrics, you know, a little silly and stuff. Even some of my favorite bands, uh, there are bands that I think do it right and do it. You know, they put some effort and some interest into it. So I'm going obscure, of course. Why, why would I not? So uh, this is this is a. Uh, Polish band. Uh, this is their third album. It's called Colts de Ghouls. Uh, and the album's called Coven. Uh, I hold it up, but that logo is a little hard to read. And, uh, you know, I love old, uh, I know Pete too, loves old Hammer horror movies, you know, old Mario Baba, old Italian horror movies. And this album, it's it's pretty long, but it tells the story of like this, uh, this girl that lives in this village a couple hundred years ago. And uh, she, there's this guy on the edge of town, you know, is he a sorcerer? Is he a witch? You know, and the peasant folk kind of rabble, you know, talk about him and these different characters come and go. And the lyrics actually go from the perspective of different people. And the vocalist, to his credit, even though it's harsh vocals, is able to take each of these different characters. And it's almost like a little mini play, uh, like an old, you know, like an old Mario Baba movie, pretty much. You know, if you ever watch Black Sunday or something like that, it has that kind of vibe to it. Old Hammer Horror. And uh, I love it. You know, it's it's effort put into it. It's it's I think creative storytelling. Uh, it kind of takes you through the different moods, uh, the different characters. You know what happens to this girl. You know, it's uh, obviously this is metal. This is horror. It doesn't really have a happy ending, depending on your perspective. You know, she goes off and joins with Satan and goes off into the woods. Uh, of course, you know what else would you expect? But uh, yeah, they uh, these guys always explored those themes. But on this album, they really is like you know what we're actually going to write like a miniature play about it. Is how it came off to me. And the lyric book has each character and like their, you know, their lines and their parts, just like you're reading an old Shakespeare play, uh, not on that level of writing, but you know, the idea is the same. So yeah, I, I love that. I wish more bands did it. Uh, I've got a couple other examples I'll go through, but uh, it is my first one. You know? And the music fits it too. The music is very dark and somber and kind of takes you through this uh, setting, I guess, you know, it's, it's black metal, but black metal, it's not crazy fast. It's kind of slow and moody in places. Uh, almost like old Black Sabbath, you know, so that's actually Ooh. a good comparison. But heavier and darker, but, you know, has that mood, about that same pace. It's not just high speed all the time. So, yeah. Cultist de Ghouls, the third album, Coven, uh, Polish band. Great album. That is my first choice. Cool. All right, Sydney. Cool. Um, so, you know, I kind of like uh, Nick was saying about lyrics. Um, you know, it's it's funny. I know Pete you're not a huge lyric person. That's why I was laughing when he was saying that. Um, <laughs> um, but for me, I've always been a huge uh, <clears throat> lyric person. I mean, obviously I care about the music and the music also has a huge role and why I'm attracted to certain songs, but I always find myself gravitating towards lyrics. Um, and uh, a lot of the time, less about how beautiful I think a lyric is, but more about how, um, I feel like I can relate to it or how it makes me feel. Um, and so the first band, I mean, what better band than a girl in her 20s, you know, can relate to is Fleetwood Mac, right? Stevie Nicks. So that was uh, the first one that I thought of. And I mean, just like the first lyric that I thought of, like, just shows the genius, specifically Stevie Nicks, because again, you know, uh, what better person to relate to than the stuff that she wrote about. But a the song Silver Springs, which is actually B-side, 
Um, I know it's kind of regained a little bit of popularity over the last couple of years, but I mean, the verse, time cast a spell on you, but you won't forget me. I know I could have loved you, but you would not let me. I'll follow you down to the sound of my voice will haunt you. You'll never get away from the sound of the woman that loves you. And it's like also so great that she made her ex sing that. Like that's, that's incredible. Like she wrote the song and was like, you have to play that every night and sing it, which is pretty badass. Um, so yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, the lyrics, that is- right. That's badass. Yeah. Like, Kill huh. I, and I mean, he did a tour too with like go your own way and stuff. So he, he got it back. He got it back at her. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, even, even go your own way, you know, the lyrics that, that one, I I just think that all in all, um, another one, Gypsy is one of my favorite Fleetwood Mac songs. Um, I just think that Stevie Nicks herself is just such an incredible lyricist and, uh, has come up with some of the most beautiful lyrics that I've ever heard. So I had to uh, pick them as my first choice. Yeah. Very personal lyrics, no matter who was writing them in that band. Yeah. So yeah. much stuff going on behind the scenes with the, with that band too, and it's like you, you it's, don't even have to read a book on Fleetwood Mac. All you have to do is read the lyrics. No, the songs. there you go. There, there's a um, a performance of that song specifically on um, a DVD, like a live DVD that they did in the '90s called "The Dance," and I think it's I don't know if it's the only time that they've that at least that it's been recorded. Like I think over video, um, I think they had audio of that song in the late '70s. Um, but I mean, the tension, the tension in that clip, I, the first time I saw it, I was like, yikes. And I mean, that was the late nineties. That wasn't even like, I mean, it wasn't even like the, the heat of it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's very powerful. Like you said, very personal, um, which I think often makes the best lyrics, you know, when you're writing from something that you really truly feel. So, um, yeah, love that one and love Stevie for sure. Cool. Good choice. All right, so let me help clarify the whole thing about how Pete doesn't like lyrics. So uh, <laughs> I don't dislike lyrics. I just, I don't really pay a hell of a lot of attention to them. I'm more of the music guy. So for me, the music's got to click with me first. And then if I'm, if I'm so inclined, I may read along to the lyrics if I'm kind of, you know, humming it or singing some of the lines to myself. And I'm kind of thinking, well, what, what is actually, what is this all about? Let me go investigate and actually read uh, along to it. I don't do that that often. I never have. So, but there are some bands, obviously that's why we're doing this. There are some bands that I have done that uh, throughout my life on. And this first one uh, is kind of a band and also kind of like a solo project for the singer, uh, Merciful Fate slash King Diamond. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, you yes. know, as as Ryan talked about before, I, you know, I'm a huge horror and monster movie fan, as in case you didn't know. And so bands and artists who write stories that basically tell, you know, like a horror story, uh, that I'm into. And oh, yeah. I'm just one of the best at that. So whether it's his solo career, doing stuff like Abigail and the Eye and them, or a lot of this Merciful Fate stuff, Whereas you don't maybe don't have like a whole concept album per se, but all of the songs are little, little mini horror epics. I mean, just so cool. I mean, just listen to some of this. This is, and again, this is their first album, Melissa, and this is evil. I mean, you know, I was born on the cemetery under the sign of the man, uh, <laughs> raised from my grave by You're the You're going to sing it like that. That's right. Yeah. I, <laughs> I was made a mercenary in the legions of hell. Now I'm king of pain. I'm insane. You know, my only pleasure it is to hear you cry. I'd love to hear you cry. I'd love to feel you die. And I'll be the first to watch your funeral. And I'll be the last to leave. I'd love to hear you cry. And it, it's got, you know, you got the curse of the pharaohs, which is all like this Egyptian mummy type stuff. I mean, it's just, for me, it's like, that's what it's all about. And I, I said this on the show I did with Martin a couple of weeks ago. I would love to sit down with King Diamond and, and talk to him about like some of his favorite horror movies and stuff, because I guarantee you they're all the same stuff that I watch and that I love. And I can tell just by the way he writes his lyrics. So yeah, Merciful Fate and or King Diamond. Uh, that is my first choice for today. That's a good one. That is funny. Back to Lynn. Well, that was on my list. <laughs> Sorry. King Diamond. King Diamond was on my list. I love them. Um, and my best friend, Lisa, she got me into them. And then Mike freaking loved King Diamond, Merciful Fate. Like there's no tomorrow. Um, so yeah, I mean, all those lyrics. And it's funny how I don't like <laughs> what Nick was saying about that. I don't like those lyrics, but I love those lyrics. You know what I mean? I think it's more horror movie-ish rather mm-hmm. than pain. 
You know what I'm saying? So like, so personal pain versus. Yeah, yeah, I, like a you know, story. Pain it's story like traded by a serial killer or something, right? You know. Yeah, yeah, like I like that much more than like to hear someone's personal agony because then I just feel bad and I want to help them. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, King Diamond was on my list, um, so I'm gonna go to another band that, of course, you knew I was gonna say, and it's uh, Queensrÿche. So I mean, right? To go rotate their the their early early writing. I mean, up till even now, rock and field, Todd Tory, they all write really really well. I mean, anybody listening, another rainy night, Della Brown, Jet City Woman, like the whole mind crime record, all of it. I just love all the lyrics of I I want to say every album, but of of most of their albums. You know, here in the now frontier, meh. You know, I'm not saying I love those lyrics. I'm not saying I love the album, but most of their stuff that they wrote, um, yeah, it, it goes deep. And of course, I, I think you guys knew that was going to be on my, on my list. I was kind of hoping, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I know I'm very predictable. <laughs> no, I mean, but you, you love what you love, right? I mean, it's, it's, only, it's only natural. They're one of your favorite bands for a reason, you know? It's like, it makes sense. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's funny because I was talking to my girlfriend even about this topic. We were on the phone just before. And I was like, yeah, you know, I, I really, this was a difficult thing for me. Like I, I couldn't just pick five of my top bands with the favorite lyrics. Every freaking band I like, I like the lyrics. Otherwise I wouldn't like them. Sometimes yeah. I may like the music, but I wouldn't be vibing. I wouldn't be. And really, to be honest with you, it depends on what point in my life, what stage of my life, because Dokken, right? Tooth and nail. I love those lyrics. That was back in the day for me. I still love the lyrics but it, it hit home uh, back in the day. Now I still love the lyrics, but it doesn't hit home as maybe some of the other records I'll be mentioning later on, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. You kind of go through um, spurts in your life, you know? Yeah. I feel like maybe, so. Absolutely. But yeah, I'll take King Diamond off my list and I'll, and I'll <laughs> throw in Queensryche, even though. Both you know. goons, yeah, there you go. Yeah. All right, back to Nick. Yeah, and, and PT, your point, like, you know, I've never had looked at a song and said i don't like this song but i like the lyrics so now i like the song it doesn't work that way like the music has to get you and then the lyrics you know mean something um and i've liked songs where i don't even know what the hell they're saying because i like such extreme metal where they're if you don't read the or the lyrics are in another language you know they, they, they could be cupcake cooking instructions and i think it's like oh it's so great so, you, know, who knows? you don't know I, 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 I assume you're singing about the devil but you could be singing about baking cookies i don't know two teaspoons of sugar baking soda yeah yeah you know tricking people into eating oatmeal raisin cookies when you think they're chocolate chip which is no the, no fuck that don't even know let's not evil. Evil. Don't that's even. a bigger that's evil don't curse us like that nick Come yeah on. that's a bigger evil than anything no, I don't mean moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Raisin is great. Come on. Oatmeal oh. raisin smoked chocolate chip. There. Is it still really? Academia. I don't want to hear that. Oh, thank like, you. Rich. That's good. Like Rich speaks the truth. Chocolate chip or die. White macadamia. Chocolate chip. Chocolate chips where it's at. There's no greater disappointment than picking up a chocolate. Uh, a chocolate. What you think is a chocolate chip cookie? And it's oatmeal raisin. It's like it's one of the worst. I put that shit that down. Is, I don't that is true. In 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 it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when an animal, you know, go sees the little tail underwater and then go at the fish, and then it's really a fucking thing. <laughs> That's what it's like. It's a what? That's an interesting. I don't know. I had. A, it's very it's fine. Like a shark. It's like an oatmeal raisin. It's nature's it's trickery. It's nature's what trickery. What is it? It's a thing? No, like there's like, little fish that have like a, a thing and they make the other fish think it's a It's player. a lure. Yeah, it's nature's lure. lure. Thank you. Thank you. That's I it. know, but I'm cracking up because you're reminding me of Goodfellas. You know, the paw, the hook. Hey, yo, it's like a dessert lure. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I'm moving on. Back to music. <laughs> so my next band is actually from Norway and it's uh, Borknagar and I believe Oystein Brun is the main lyric writer, but I think a lot of them take turns writing lyrics. Uh, so why is it meaningful to me? Um, so this album, um, Quintessence, I have some lyrics tattooed on one of my arms. Um, nothing but the process is infinite. It's like my, you know, this band represents a lot of like when I was uh, younger and I knew I was rejecting like organized religion um, and I was looking for more meaning and this band sang about uh, 
like nature and and the universe and and the seasons and the forces of of um going on all around us and it, they sang about it in such a a compelling and gripping way that it uh it, it really really hit home to me and it gave me um something like a you know like 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 a meaningful like almost like a uh, musical bible of of what i what i valued so um pretty much their whole career uh they've written odes to nature and and such um i guess if i had to pick one it would be the lyrics to winter thrice yeah that's which, a good yeah it looks like this album i probably should have uh Oh, here we go. Um, let's see. Nah, it's too hard to read. Anyway, you guys can look it up. You want a surprise? <laughs> yeah, <my laughs> that's what the internet's for, right? That's what the internet's for. My eyes have the old. Go look it up yourself. Yeah, I'll look it up. But yeah, but it just it's what's cool about them is they come from that black metal world, but they never really sang about anything, anything like you know, doctrinal, any Satanism, anything like that. They just really they they make you think about uh, the origins of the universe and and the the powerful forces that that shape everything in such a cool and poetic way and i got to give them credit because for all of them english is their second language and i didn't really go with many norse bands i guess or bands from other countries uh except for these two one i'll mention later um because that is a challenge for them and when you're into extreme metal you know it, it, you could see when bands are, are are struggling to uh to write lyrics in english um I can only speak one language, so I can't imagine writing a song in a language I learned, you know, when I was 10 or something. That's a pretty amazing that they can do that. So Borknagar to me is one of the best lyric lyricists, all of them together. Um, so I pick uh, Borknagar, their whole career. And their cool lyrics are expertly matched with that amazing music, which... Exactly. Again, it's what first drew me to that band. No surprise. Oh, seriously, yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, it's, you're, uh, they're singing about a mountaintop, yeah. right? And you feel like you're on that mountaintop, like you bit into a York peppermint patty. Yeah. Oh, that's refreshing. The sensation. That's yeah, right. but with a dessert, sword yeah. in your skull, a big peppermint yeah. sword. Yeah, just yeah. lots of lots of food analogies tonight. I know. I'm Somebody's hungry. Cool. Yeah, go eat after this. Somebody's hungry. <laughs> cookies and yeah. my next pick will have something to do with coconut macaroons no just kidding <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't tease me oh man all right rich catino back to you all right so you you stole mine i was gonna go with merciful fate and the king uh-huh cool being a horror fan you guys know i go on uh, the monster stand too so love horror movies like you do pete and everybody else i think too long time horror fan so love the lyrics and the stage presentation of the king you know, very theatrical. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna bypass that. I'm gonna pull somebody else out then, since you already mentioned that one. I'm gonna go with Dio next as my four. Great choice. But I'm gonna go with Ronnie James Dio, so I can cover Rainbow Sabbath and Dio. How's that? Because you're Rich Catino, so, you can pull Catino. So I'm, I'm, Catino I'm, I'm not picking the band. I'm picking the person. So I cover three bands at once. There you go, the Rich. Creative, the creative, imaginative lyrics that he did for those. We expect nothing less of you. Good three bands, right? Yep. I think that works, right? That's valid, right? Yep. Yeah. All right. I wrote cool. similar lyrics in all three bands. I mean, it wasn't too far apart. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, so I'm going to read lyrics from one of my favorite songs that was from his least liked album, Sacred Heart. But love the title track. It was always one of my favorite Dio songs. So this part is where it says, um, well, you fight to kill the dragon, you bargain with the beast, then you sail into a side. You run along the rainbow and never leave the ground, still you don't know why. Whenever you dream you're holding the key, it opens the door to let you be free. Very cool. Yeah. He always writes like that. Very, you know, poetic. Very inspirational. Always loved his lyrics. Wasn't it great how, like, on all the, his first couple D.O. albums, all those title tracks are so good? Yeah, you know, I'm not. It's, I'm not a huge Sacred Heart fan, but that that's a great song. Yeah, that's my favorite song on that album. You know, it's half and half on half on that album. Half like some of the songs, the other half are kind of average. But love the title track, great song. Yeah, he's always he's always writes like that. It's a little part Dungeons and Dragons, a little part inspirational. You know, very cool. I would agree. Cool. Good choice. All right, Ryan. <clears throat> All right, so. Uh... I, you know, I, I think to an extent, the stuff you experience and grow up as a kid kind of influences this, like horror movies. And when I was growing up, too, I read a fucking shit ton of sci-fi, you know, <laughs> Herbert, uh, Brian Aldiss, 
Kurt Vonnegut, Harlan Ellison, Philip K. Dick. I love that stuff growing up. And there's not a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of metal that uses sci-fi lyrics, but a lot of it's kind of silly. It's like the sillier side of Star Wars, almost like Disney Star Wars. So I'm not into a lot of it, but th there's some cool exceptions. So there was a band from uh, San Francisco that's still around that always had kind of power metal, like traditional heavy metal band, always had kind of unusual lyrics, uh, you know, kind of the, the, uh, the lyricist and singer, Mike Scalzi, very smart guy, writes really cool stuff. And I think it's their fourth or fifth album uh, in the chronology, but it's generally most people would say their favorite, their best album. The band's The Lord Weird Slow Fig, and the album's called Traveler. Wow. So what they did was uh, there was this old board game, like Dungeons and Dragons game that I never played called Traveler from uh, the 80s or whatever. I, I never even heard of it uh, <clears throat> out of this context, but it's, it was a sci-fi game. So they said, fuck it, we're going to write a whole album about this obscure board game that no one's probably no one else has ever heard of except maybe a small handful of fans or maybe it's huge i'm not really into the whole Dungeons and dragons world you know so i don't know maybe it was big but i never heard of it but uh yeah, it's cool so it's it's like this traditional kind of iron maiden judas priest queens reichish heavy metal and it's the concept album but it's like this kind of fun tale about this futuristic society this guy is like a space pirate and he's transporting you know this alien technology and there's these aliens that are like half wolf, half human and this mad scientist and all this crazy shit, you know, and this guy's avoiding like the authorities, like dodging through like asteroids and shit. So it's cool. It's just a fun story. Uh, I have no fucking idea how much of it is that is really pulled from the game, how much they just made up to make it fit the album. But uh, I love the album. The music flows. It's very high paced, energetic. It's not dark at all. It's very like kind of, I don't want to say bubbly, but, you know, it's, it's very energetic stuff. Uh, whenever I've seen them a couple of times, whenever they bust out songs from this album, people go nuts. Just saw them in Texas a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was fucking awesome. Uh, and all their albums, the guy writes great lyrics on all their albums, really kind of heady, witty stuff, you know, great turns of phrase. Uh, but this is the only, I think this is their high water mark. And this is a, and you know, right on the album cover there, you see like this half human, half dog soldier with like laser guns and shit. So it's, it's fucking cool. Ryan is, um, is Mike a, uh, a philosophy professor i believe he is a professor uh what he's a professor of and what university he teaches at yeah he might, I, I, you know what I, that, that does sound right so i think he is a philosophy professor somewhere in san francisco history maybe yeah yep. i couldn't you know i mean that's what the internet's for but uh yeah the guy the guy is very smart writes great lyrics and uh this album you know it just it just flows it, do, it doesn't seem like forced or pretentious it's just like there's a great heavy metal album that we stole from this board game and it make, make, makes it work and it sounds cool. You read along the lyrics, like they're pretty, pretty damn well written. You know, you could easily kind of transpose this into like a movie setting and it would work. It's just, uh, it's good stuff. So Lord Weird Slow Fig Traveler, which came out in uh, 2003, yeah, early 2000s, like 20 years ago, we'll say. So great album. Mm, I'm going to listen to that. You would probably like it. It's good. And his singing's great too. And it's just, they're, they're a good band. Really. Yeah, but they don't really sound like anybody. I know I always said Maiden, Priest, Queens, right? But they don't really sound like anybody else. They're pretty, pretty freaking unique. Yeah, nice. they just have a classic heavy metal sound. They yep. do. It's like very '80s sounding, but in their own little special way. Great bass guitar in there too. Oh yeah, absolutely. That guy was awesome live. All right, back to Sydney. Cool. So I know sometimes people take stuff off their list if it's already been said, but I'm sticking with what I had before, even if somebody else has already said it. Um, so I, too, am going to go with Queensryche. Um, I know that I had mentioned Operation Mind Crime last week with like my top five favorite albums, but obviously kind of like Lynn was saying, you know, a lot of a lot of my favorite bands kind of correlate to who I think, you know, has my favorite lyrics. So um, Operation Mindcrime obviously is one of my favorite records and I'm a huge concept record fan you know honestly I don't have you know uh, I guess a preference as to what it whatever the concept album is about I just I love the fact that it's a story and especially Operation Mindcrime and um, still to this day I feel like the lyrics of that album and I mean I love other Queens where I records too you know lyrics and other records but I feel like the lyrics on this album 30 years later are still so extraordinarily prevalent and I'm not going to get political because that's not the point but you know with with Queensryche I mean to this day every time I listen to Revolution Calling I 
get chills. Like, you know, I used to think that only America's way away was right, but now the holy dollar r- rules everybody's lives. Got to make a million, doesn't matter who dies. You know, like it's just, it's just <laughs> after yeah. all, all these years, like it's just so extraordinarily prevalent. It stayed so contemporary. It stayed so relevant. Um, and, you know, obviously that works into the story that, you know, many of us know, um, which I'm not going to go too in depth on because I'm sure everybody watching is familiar. Um, but I mean, I just love Queensryche. They, they, you know, even you look at Empire, the title track as well. It's just still so relevant. Um, so I had to go with those, even though Lynn already said it, I was staying true to my, true to my list. So Queensryche is definitely up there for me. I'm happy you did. (laughs) <laughs> yeah it's amazing if you listen to like the the two full lengths that came before operation mind crime you can totally yeah. see the direction they were going because yep. they were already doing some pretty advanced stuff uh lyrically and musically and then uh i think after promised land we kind of took well, i mean we're not here to talk about the career queens right but i think uh, lyrically <laughs> they uh yeah it's i don't know they, they they've gotten back on track in recent years but yeah. I mean, let's say they kind of lost their way a little bit for a while yeah I mean, I, and I love band, you know, like, I th- think it's different from bands of that era, too. I mean, I'm not saying that every band, because I love the glam stuff, don't get me wrong. But, you know, and I, I love the party music, too, you know, sex, drugs, rock and roll, etc. But, um, you know, Queensryche was definitely much deeper. You know, they they mm-hmm. went, they went so far past that, um, you know, while still kind of sticking in the realm of that music, you know, like the the sound um that you know can they can fit alongside those bands of that time um but I feel like yeah they were just were so far advanced lyrically that a lot of they were up here on that level where a lot of the other bands were still like down here so I really respect them for that yep. <clears throat> all right my next choice is uh white snake no just kidding I love you Dave but Take me down slow, what do you say? That's not your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody loves Coverdale more than me, but you know, those lyrics, uh, yeah, I've always, they're, they're, they're you know, we know what they are. They're, they're, they're nothing overly thoughtful, right? Um, no, uh, actually my next pick, uh, kind of a surprise. And, I, and when I was doing the show with Martin, I, I didn't really expect this band to show up so high, but the truth of the matter is, you know, they're one of my favorite bands of all time, if not my favorite band of all time. And I have consistently over the years throughout all of their eras and everything, I generally pay fairly close attention to the lyrics and that's Black Sabbath. And whether it's, you know, Geezer writing the lyrics or, you know, maybe Ozzy a little bit or Tony or whether it's Ronnie or whether it's Ian Gillen, uh, or whether it's, you know, whoever, Tony Martin, uh, I generally am kind of always interested in the Sabbath lyrics, because I think that there's this misconception that Black Sabbath lyrics are very evil and dark, and while sometimes they are, I mean, especially Geezer Butler, he wrote some really cool, like, kind of like the horrors of post-war lyrics and stuff about Christianity, and really deep and not always so evil just really kind of dark and cool and I wanted to kind of read a little bit from uh from a song called a national acrobat and uh great uh, yeah it's a great song right and again these lyrics you you have to like you know you kind of you're left wanting to like really kind of figure it all out like uh, I am the world that hides the universal secret of all time destruction of the empty spaces is my one and only crime I've lived a thousand times I found out what it means to be believed the thoughts and images, the unborn child who never was conceived. When little worlds collide, I'm trapped inside my embryonic cell and flashing memories are cast into the never ending well. And it goes on from there. This whole song is just like really fascinating. Again, what does it all mean? I don't know, but it's just really cool to kind of like read through some of these, uh, especially the 70s albums, to read through and really try to figure out what they're getting at. And I think the point is that Sabbath were just, were not just one note singing about, you know, evil and satan and all that kind of stuff and actually when actually they they did that what once or twice and all the rest of the stuff is just very interesting you know the horrors of drug addiction and, and all sorts of stuff the vietnam war uh the war pigs and stuff. Like- yeah right it's just i mean even like iron man right you think oh iron man some dumb dumb song about you know the marvel comics character iron man no it's not at all right so it's uh yeah so black sabbath is my next choice uh just really really cool thoughtful lyrics and i think most people listen to sabbath for the riffs and everything but uh there's a lot going on there lyrically too that's just as uh, unique i think 
So. And both Ozzy and Dio, like, you know, Rich was saying, like, both both eras of the band have extremely thoughtful lyrics, you know? Yeah, it's like way different. different. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Totally different vibes. Yep. Um, All right, Lynn, back to you. Dio was on my list. <laughs> so now I got to take that off. But, um, <laughs> but, I mean, who doesn't love Ron and James Dio and everything he was in or that he touched or that he sang? Because there's a feeling when Ronnie sings with with ever band he was singing and it was just uh i can't i i was just saying to mike the other day i was like i'm just so sad that we could never it's one all the concerts we go to it's just one concert we never get to go see together is is ron james doing it's sad I mean, I, um but not if he was Either around way, he'd, he'd still be doing it today if he was here yeah uh, sure um but i'm gonna pick um iron maiden um iron maiden steve harris i mean everything tells a story and to be honest with you, my brother uh, is the one that really turned me on to Iron Maiden. Uh, he had, he actually had the Eddie sticker on his hockey helmet because he's a hockey player. He was a hockey player. So I was like, what the hell is that? I love that logo. What is that emblem? And then I just, I just put it on and then you got to see all the videos on MTV. And then it in turn made me like history. And then I started learning about history and then from all the stories. And uh, so Iron Maiden definitely for me, um, was really powerful you know i had the killer's tapestry i got my cousins um, into into it so I, I think i'm gonna use that instead of my ronnie james deal cool and i'm sure that down the line nick franco will go into detail and probably read something nice uh. um, <laughs> i hope and um and i'll let him continue on with that and actually, you know, it's interesting, uh, again, we brought it up a couple times here today, but <clears throat> for those of us who are maybe a little bit older and experienced Maiden, like when they first came onto the scene, for me, again, they were singing songs about horror movies and old like horror novels and things it's like that. Opera, yeah. yeah, I mean, it was, so it instantly appealed to me. I mean, you know, Jack the Ripper and Phantom of the Opera and, and all this kind of really cool stuff, you know, the Murders in the Room organ. If they Murders in the Room organ. Yeah. yeah, so it's just like, so that, you know, that's what they did on their first, like, three albums. And that, that for me, was an instant yeah. turn on. So, and then they yeah. went from there, they went to all the historical stuff. Newer stuff. Yeah. yeah, exactly. The Still Life. I love Still Life. Hallowed love Bay. Still Life. Love I got to see them do that once, Lynn. Uh, I saw them. Did you see them for the Seventh Sun Tour? I did. And I did see it. They did that song then. Yep. Screw you guys. <laughs> <laughs> they did Killers that set, too. Oh, cool. Yeah. I even have Nico Drumstick. Just saying. Nice. Very cool. All right, show off. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was right. just Back the... <laughs> One second. Be oh, gone. you have one too? Be gone, be gone. No, because she knows I'm reading something that is inappropriate, and so she's like lurking. <laughs> um, yeah, because she's lurking. Just let her lurk. Um, all right, so I'm not going to say who this is. I'm just going to read this snippet, and then we'll talk about it. I, ha I want to just read this. Well, I could probably guess. Go. Yeah. <clears throat> Bear with me here. Okay. This is about the Countess Bathory. Um, her likeness hung in the black gallery, commanding unease, demanding of death to breathe. Midst the whirl and daylight fauna of society at court, Elizabeth bedazzled, her presence sought applause. Though her torchlit shadow thrown upon damp cellar walls greeted nothing but despair from slaves her knights enthralled. Thirteen winter solstices had shown her path that the dark had marked its dominion. Spray, ooh, no, spaying the confessor whose caresses she'd known as whipcord in the house of dog, her cold cut meat on holy bone. <laughs> Raped of faith, she now embraced the narcissistic unrest frozen on the mirror's face. With this disdain inside these veins, highborn wanton that she was, she sought to keep what age would claim. Her soul was sold, and for this toll, reeking pyres ever smoldered on the whims of one so in control. Elizabeth, mysterious cruelty, brought the orchids from the bowels of the abyss. I know who that is. I know who that is. Ooh, 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 ooh. Say it. Right of filth. <laughs> yeah. Danny <laughs> filth. That's just one snippet. And, uh... This entire this Cruelty and the Beast album is uh, not far off from one of my favorite albums of all time. Um, all the lyrics are completely poetic, like that darkly gothic romance style. Like, I don't know how this guy sings so extreme, but makes everything rhyme and all the verses line up. Um, Dusk and Her Embrace was another one, mm -hmm. and he's carried it through. I think the lyrical strength uh, through today. 
one of the best. This is a guy who you know grew up reading uh, everything from Shakespeare to um, you know horror uh, novels and such. But he ca they capture the old spirit mm -hmm. of like gothic horror, um, and uh, and and a lot of the, I mean that's about Bathory. It's about Elizabeth Bathory. So I mean it's there is some historical context that it's based on. But um, and they they do one about Gilles de Ray, the, the psychotic uh, serial killer of, of children. Um, so they, they definitely, um, everything's about, you know, horror and everything like that, like you guys were saying. Um, but I would say that, uh, Danny Filth is one of the brightest lyrical writers I've ever come across. You can hate their music cause it's screechy black metal. I mean, it's very, it's like if Iron Maiden wrote screechy black metal, that's how I describe them. You could hate this, uh, this band and you could pick this up and read it like a, like a storybook. And that is unique. There's not a lot of bands like that. They're from England. So English is the primary language. So definitely Cradle of Filth, more specifically the Cruelty and the Beast and Dusk and Her Embrace album, albums. He's like a human theosaurus, man. He, the stuff he comes up with is yeah. unbelievable. But it doesn't feel forced. It's just so and like, I hope makes I did rhyme. Yeah, it's yeah. like you said, I don't know how he makes these words rhyme. You're like, yeah. I got a dictionary out. Like, what the fuck does that word mean? Yeah. And <laughs> Sydney, this, this is a concept album. And, um, okay, I, I actually have never listened to it, so I'm going to add that to my list. Of if you could get good. past his his vocal is like almost nothing else. It's like uh, it's like if King Diamond was at his highest note and somebody shoved a uh, electric shock rod up his ass. That's what that's like. Kind of what Danny Filth sounds like. <laughs> um, <laughs> somehow it works with this guy because he growls low and he does different whispers and shit. But it if, is you a visual. Get, if you can get past that. Okay. Right, Ry. I mean, this album is like the twin guitar harmonies and stuff. I mean, it's oh, it's, we uh, we yeah, saw him play the whole cool. album last fall in, in uh, Manhattan. And it yeah, was, you know, cool. Chef's Kiss again. You know, fucking and, glorious. Yeah, so it's a concept <laughs> album about Elizabeth Bathory, and it's a little, you know, they take uh, what do you call it, poetic license with it. But I mean, it just it all comes together at the end, and it's it's like oh, it's so cool, it's so cool. I love my Countess Bathory with Venom, so I figure I'll check that out. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, great song. Is yeah. uh, is there an album that he doesn't sing like that? No, no. <laughs> Short answer, no. Well, no, I mean, there's some of the some of the later ones. There's there's a couple of albums that came out like in the like late 2000s, like 2012, where where yeah. they're where they're more like gothic metal albums where he does some more melodic stuff. Like uh -huh. Rich, I could probably turn you on to a couple of those that I think yeah. they're not. Yeah. The earlier albums are definitely more higher register. Yeah, he's yeah. in a higher register most of the time. His voice always turned me off from their music. I never. Oh yeah, it's, I always liked Demi Borger, but I never liked Cradle. Look, the first time I ever heard Cradle of Filth, I wasn't ready for it. It was Dusk and mm. Embrace, and I was like, everything about this is cool, but what is with this guy? Yeah. But I've uh, devolved over yeah. the years. So. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I count the, the whole Countess Bathory story, man. It's like so many people have have used that, and you know, whether it's music and movies and stuff. I mean, I've gotten a lot of life out of that. Mm -hmm. that Definitely that character. Yeah, cool. All right, Rich, back to you. All right. Going with another one of my all time favorites, Halloween. They always have great lyrics, a lot of variety. It's not all fantasy, sci fi. Dungeons and Dragons, all that kind of stuff. It's all types of topics, all types of songs. They're not one dimensional. It's not always happy, happy power metal. It's not all fast and speedy. They have a lot of variety to the music, especially if you check out Chameleon and Pink Bubbles Go Ape, the oddballs of the catalog, but shows their diversity. But when I picked up, of course, Walls of Jericho, and then I got Keeper One and Two. You know, the storytelling in this is, is awesome, especially the title track to this. One of my all-time, love the artwork too. They always have great artwork connected with the lyrics to their song as well, title tracks, you know. So they got a title track for Time of the Oath, same thing with Keeper of the Seven Keys. Um, seen them like a dozen times in concert, one of my all-time favorite bands and one of my all-time favorite bands that have lyrics that span a variety of topics. Rich, Love songs, my, epics, all that stuff. My favorite album of theirs is actually better than Raw, and um, oh, it's and a great love, album. Yeah, and I love the Dark Ride, and those those two in particular. To what you're saying, yeah. real serious themes like, uh, yeah, you know, time is you know standing like holding someone's hand while they're dying, kind of thing. That's that's right. not happy, happy Halloween stuff. And they, right, right, they do, they do 
the whole spectrum. So that's great. Yeah. They're not one dimensional. They're not a one trick pony. So yeah. Always get something out of their lyrics. It's a good pick. Thanks. Oh, we lost Lynn. Okay. All right. Ryan. Uh, I couldn't look it up fast enough, Rich, but the newest, the self-titled newest album, uh, some of the songs yeah. on that, like, I think I cannot remember the name of the second song, but uh, man, um, that's, that's fucking great. Like the way it kind of like, uh, where it's like, guy thinks he's at a race you know it's the whole and then you know it's, it's all like a kind of a dream thing but it's very upbeat and very motivational uh it's, uh well i gotta find it now i know that i know i was trying to look it up but I, I couldn't do it quick enough uh, but well, yeah that's it. a that's a really good fucking song really like, good like motivational lyrics fear of the fallen yeah that's it yeah first time i fear heard of the fallen, like, yes this is fucking great yeah. uh they're so awesome so I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna do a couple things here i'm gonna Pick one of Nick's future picks, uh, lyricist, but I'm not going to pick the band he's going to pick because I'm inside his head right now. I know what band he's going to pick, so I'm going to pick a different band. I already know. Uh, <laughs> so this this album, this band, they did a one-off album. It's kind of like a one-and-done deal, a little super project this guy did. Uh, it's not Operation Mind Crime, but it's similar to Operation Mind Crime. So this, the lyricist is Alan Averill, Irish singer for the band Primordial. And he did an album about 12 years ago with two guys from the Canadian band Revenge, like straight up black death metal band. And the band was called Blood Revolt. And the album is called Indoctrine. So this album, it's similar to Operation Mind Crime, but Operation Mind Crime is very political. Oh, a great album, too. I love Operation Mind Crime. It's political. This guy, you know, obviously gets involved, carry out assassins on behalf of Dr. X, gets all involved, loses his mind, you know, woman gets involved, of course, it's always how it is, and, you know, shit goes fucking off the rails. So this album, uh, it's a concept album, too, it takes a similar thing, this guy gets, uh, there's one guy, there's no woman involved, and this dude just loses his fucking mind, he starts seeing shit, he starts hearing voices, he thinks God's talking to him, he convinces himself he's got to start killing people, uh, he has all these things where scenes where he's on the subway and he's like, you know, people know what's inside my head, like just paranoid, schizophrenic kind of shit going on. And it's it's very grim. There's absolutely none of the, uh, I want to say, upbeat or like, not, not that Operation Mind Crime is a happy album, but there's none of that. It's bleak as fuck. Uh, I, don't, I was actually looking through the lyrics. I'm like, maybe there's a good part I can read, but every lyric is just very dark. You know, he's just talking about, you know, just the the, uh, the hell he sees around him and how he keeps descending into madness. And at the end, as the album ends, he's like, that's it. I'm going to do it. And then the album's over. It's like, what the fuck's he going to do? You know, yeah. you know what he's going to do. But, uh, you know, it's going to go out and, you know, cause a lot of fucking problems. But, uh, yeah, great album, too. It's it's definitely a unique album because it's it's black and death metal. But Alan, he can do screechy vocals, but he doesn't. Yeah, this is almost, uh, they're singing vocals. And uh, he's actually taking you through this character. So there's parts where he's like, kind of like raving like a madman, like talking, spoken word. Uh, it's all kinds of shit. Like you can tell as he goes to the album, he's kind of getting more and more deranged. The guy is a phenomenal vocalist. He's got a huge range. And uh, he really, really pulls it together on this. And it, I remember asking him at one point a while ago, are you guys ever going to do another of these albums? But no, nah, it was just a one and done. Uh, he's got other bands going on now. And those guys got other bands going on. So this was just, unfortunately, just a one and done. But uh, it doesn't sound anything. I know, I know I'm comparing to Operation Mind Crime because it has some loose connections, but it doesn't sound anything like that. So don't go into this thinking like, oh, it's going to be music like that. It's zero fucking percent like that. Other than the overall theme of this guy, like I gotta go, uh, I gotta do this, and uh, you know I gotta I gotta commit these uh, these basically terrorist acts, murders, you know, on behalf of whatever. In this case, it's insanity or like God's telling him to do it. So uh, yeah, the album is uh, Blood Revolt and Doctrine. Just a cool story. It's very dark, very. Uh, it's just creative because I remember when this came out, a lot of people were wanting like, well, you can't have crazy black metal like that with like these clean vocals. I'm like, well, the fuck you can't because they just did it. And it's a great album. You know, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to follow any musical rules, you know. But uh, yeah, people are like, ah, oh, you gotta have screechy vocals with black metal. You can't have clean vocals because the music is just it's it's fucking intense. It's it's black metal basically. So uh it's like Polly Walnuts. Tone, yeah, you can't have this black metal with the clean vocals, Tone. Tell Tone, I'm fucking telling you, they can do whatever the fuck. <laughs> don't start the soprano shit, man. Because you, know, you know where that leads. Yeah. Yep. yep. All right, back to Sydney. Cool. Um, so like Lynn, I think I had a hard time picking what, what I was leading up to this 
picking what bands. I had a couple ideas in my head and then I kind of was trying to think hard and like, man, what bands do I really truly love the lyrics of? Because I love the lyrics of so many artists and so many bands that it was hard to pick just five. So I, I agree with Lynn. Thank you. On that. Um, but one that was, I was like, oh my God, obvious choice, Led Zeppelin. I love Led Zeppelin lyrics. And some of them you're like, what are you talking about? Like Black Sabbath, you're like, this is a lot of mumbo jumbo. It sounds really pretty. Um, but then you have stuff like the Rain Song is one of my all time favorite Led Zeppelin songs. Um, it is a springtime of my loving, the second season I am to know. You are the sunlight in my growing, so little warmth I felt before. It isn't hard to feel me glowing. I watched the fire that grew so low. You know, it's it's. It, I honestly think that Led Zeppelin lyrics are are very poetic. Um, you know, even you want to go into Stairway to Heaven, right? Um, Phenomenal. You know, it's. I know that it's extremely overplayed. To no, it's one of the best songs on earth. Still amazing. Yeah, yeah I I can oh, listen to Stairway to Heaven over and over again and not get sick. Oh, yeah. Over and over. Um, but, you know, like, you know, there are two paths you can go by, but in the long run, there's still time to change the road you're on. Every time I hear that, I get chills every bumps, single man. time. Um, another one, I'm like naming all my favorites. Um, Tangerine is one of my also all-time favorite Led Zeppelin tracks. You know, <coughs> Summer's Day, Only Fine, It Slips Away to Gray, The Hours, They Bring Me Pain. Um, you know, obviously Tangerine, Tangerine, Living Reflection from a Dream. I was her love. She was my queen. And now a thousand years between. It's like... You know, oh, they, they wrote it powerful. You know, awesome. So, so, so much stuff where, you know, like I said, some of the lyrics are like, what are you talking about? And then other times it's, you know, it's, but no matter what they're talking about, it's, they have a way of making it sound um, so beautiful and uh, you know, and they, they rip. So I mean, that <laughs> lets up what is just an obvious choice for me. And the drumming is phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But of course, all all, all of win. them are phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a good choice. All right. My next one, uh, a little band from New Jersey that actually Rich and I just saw very recently, uh, Symphony X, with uh, all lyrics and music written by Michael Romeo, founder of the band, guitar player, composer. And, and these guys mainly go for very sci-fi fantasy-based lyrics, very, very conceptual. This particular album is uh, their fifth album titled v, uh, Five or V, the New Mythology Suite. And, you know, so many big epic songs. And just this gives you a little hint of, of what you can expect here from uh, the song Rediscovery Part Two, The New Mythology. Uh, a voice from the past echoes the fate, a tale of all things yet to come. As it once was, so it shall be again, modern day children of the sun. Seek the hidden rhyme and there you'll find a new world order. Feel the mystery, so much to see through the eyes of hope. The thoughts of Ma'at forever secured, locked in the ages, goddess of truth speaks eternally from the depths of the pages. Very epic, very yeah. kind of thoughtful and like I said, sci-fi fantasy driven and uh, and, and Romeo loves like film score music and things like that. So you get these big orchestral kind of like uh, arrangements and stuff. And it's very, very heavy music as well. So Symphony X, Michael Romeo, the lyricist. Back to Lynn. So um, I had a hard time because I have 9 million records on my list and I, I really don't know where to go. I do know my number one and I'm holding out for that because that's like my all time favorite. Um, and I love Metallica, so I would like to say Metallica because I think that all their lyrics and all their songs are amazing. Um, but I also love this one band that most of you do not like <laughs> and most guys do not like, but it's Five Finger Death Punch. And I know, I, you could shake your head all you want. Nice tongue. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know, but screw all of you because I'm sticking true to me and this is what that's makes right. me feel good. That's right. That's what you, you got to do. Right? That's what counts. That's, what's, that's all. That's awesome. what I'm doing me. This is all about me. So uh, right now I love Five Finger and I love everything they write about. And every time I'm at the gym and, I, and a Five Finger Death Punch song comes on, it just makes me feel insane. And, you know, it's no one gets left behind. Another fallen soul. No one gets left behind. It's like you're not leaving anybody behind. You're you're going, you know, partners or either that or you're dying alone. Uh, Jekyll and Hyde. You know, it's 
it, it goes to like people today, right? It's always Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde. You never know what the hell you're going to get from people. You think somebody's one way and then bam, guess what? They completely change and they do what I call as a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. So to me, it relates to every to everyday life and all their songs make me feel good and make me want to kill somebody. And <laughs> Their cover of Bad Company definitely makes me insane, but you know. Um, no, I mean, it doesn't really make me want to kill somebody. It just, it's, it's a psyched record. When you're at the gym and you put it on, it's like you can't, you want to do one more rep. You want to add a few more weights. You want to run that extra half mile. You just do, you know, for me anyway. But so for me, it was a toss up between them and Metallica for my number or whatever. Um, and I love Metallica. And I love all their lyrics too. And of course I have 19 honorable mentions like Steve Killer later. So <laughs> <laughs> I like all their lyrics too. You know, again, like Sydney and I were saying, like, it's really hard for me to pick just five because depending on the day of the week, how I feel, my hormones are fluctuating, like, like except for my consistency are going to be Queensryche, right? I mean, you know that, so but, uh, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it, whether you guys like it or not. Fuck them. Fuck them. That's how it should be. Fuck them if they can't take a joke. <laughs> that's right, Paulie Walnut. I'd rather not, but okay. <laughs> it's figurative. I know. You do it, Lynn. You, you can have your five-finger death punch. I'm gonna take it. Enjoy him. She's like, and I will. Well, Fuck you. Ivan Moody's my future ex-husband anyway, so. <laughs> I'm just All right, where are we? Nick Franco. Yes. Number All right. Two. Yes, number two. So, um, we had, I had touched on before about how you know I do listen to a lot of foreign bands, and sometimes their struggles with English are, are an impediment. Sometimes it's not. But one band in particular, and they are one of my absolute favorite bands on earth. One of them, uh, starting with their 2007 album, Silent Waters, uh, decided they stuck up. They did something that was fairly unique. Um, they hired a guy to write and translate their lyrics for them. And um, this gentleman is a apparently a, a fairly well-to-do um, perform avant-garde performance artist from Tampere, Finland. And his name is uh, Pekka Kainalainen. <laughs> But um, he, he's about 65 years old and uh, since 2007. And um, so he's got like probably like 20 years on them. Um, and he is just an absolutely phenomenal writer. A lot of their uh, albums are conceptual around the lyrics where they talk about different uh, characters in Finnish mythology. And uh, Finnish mythology is amazing because um, without bogging down into the history of it all, but um, the Finnish people have sort of a different lineage than any of the other Scandinavian people. So um, it's very cool and full of amazing, vibrant characters and stuff like that. So um, Mr. Kainalainen, <laughs> Kainalainen uh, he has done such a phenomenal job. Their lyrics are so beautiful and so, again, you, you could not even like amorphous, but you can pick up the lyric booklet and read through and um, they are quite magnificent. Um, I'll read a quick one called come the spring. Um, let's see, where should I start here? Um, dream wavers above me, the wild fowl arriving as a crane flies through me. I know that she will come like a solar flare coming down from <laughs> the lyrics, a missile flying in. <laughs> Wait till I do drugs and do this show. It's like when he opens the I'm book. I'm looking forward to that. Up. It's like the light, the light comes up. Yeah. Imagine it's real magic. No. We're all gonna suck. And He's reading from the Book of the Dead, right? All those. <laughs> yeah, I finally oh. conjured something in my room. <laughs> Sorry, we're fucking with you. Keep no, it's okay. I, <laughs> it's a stupid light on my phone. <clears throat> As I was saying, um, uh, the boulders of giants are rolling down my slopes in the streams of my old veins. I carry sand for the golden reefs as blood red buds in the snow. Flowers will rise from the ground. The deer will come grazing and the bear must be awake. Come the spring. I am reborn. The wind lays down beside me. My dream already fades. Oh, come the spring. I'll live again. The blackened ice is melting, swirling in my eyes. Um, some of the songs are darker. Some of them are more lighthearted. But they all have this loose uh, representation of the Finnish wilderness and the history of the people. And you can just get into their, their, um, their lyrics are just, I mean, Pete, you know very well. I, I think I know, Ryan, you listen to them. Um, endlessly uh, entertaining. And, and, you know, they, this guy must have such a grip on English. There's two other guys, actually, that work with him. 
to translate the lyrics that he writes into English. So they have a team of three people to write their lyrics and, and, you know, and, and make sure that they translate smoothly. And I, I, for one, appreciate that effort because, you know, however haughty us only English speaking Americans are, uh, it is a bit of an impediment when, when a band writes, you know, um, has clearly struggling with their concepts because English is their second or third language. Um, again, I, I give them crazy credit for, for, for doing it, but Amorphous like blows that away with just having wonderfully elucidated lyrics that are, are not even that you wouldn't even guess for a million years that somebody uh, for whom English was a second language wrote it. So I highly recommend anybody who's on the fence with Amorphous, just start reading their lyrics. It's they will capture you. They will capture you. That's cool. I kind of want to write some spoken word after you just read that, you know. Yo, drop the beat. I don't know. That's not really spoken <laughs> word. What? I don't know. I had a lot That's of caffeine. That's out of left field, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of caffeine. I was going to say, what was it? Apparently. You know, I was dropped. I was dropped. Down now. It's a shame Butch ain't here, Nick, because he'd still be hung up on those guys' names. Like, wait a minute. What's his name? There's too many vowels in a row. Yeah. Meanwhile, it sounds like every hockey player. You know, yeah, they do because sometimes you read me off. He's like, "Is this a real name? Uh, is it a or a hockey player?" I'm like, "I don't fucking know." When he couldn't get, I'm like, "You know, yes, he pulled your Yarvi, right? The player on the Oilers. You just say that guy's name. Why can't you say uh, have a Kroonu? <laughs> <laughs> Who he loves now? I you got can't. you got a point there. You got a point. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You ever? I, I never heard you talk about Amorphous. Have you ever like taken a dive into their catalog, Rich? I think you would like a lot of their newer ones. Not. Oh, yeah. Not a, uh, a little bit. I know. I know Therion better than Amorphous. Amorphous. I like. I like. I like Therion, but I got to get into Amorphous more. Yeah, you know, I would like say I, I think the their last like probably seven or eight albums you'd probably really enjoy. Okay. Yeah, quite yeah I think you would, Rich. I could send you some of their more melodic stuff. You, you, nice. His voice is amazing. Yeah, I gotta listen to them more. Yeah, but I do like them. Yeah, I want to listen to it now. Going back oh. to like Elegy, like in the mid '90s, like from Elegy on, it's yeah. all like that, very melodic, very. Yeah. Awesome. yeah, and Before they always that, got they always got their lyrics. Not always, but I think mostly got their lyrics from ancient or old uh, Finnish texts and poems. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's <laughs> but yeah, they always did that. They've always been big on that. Just so. before Elegy, it was like more musically death metal. But it, from that point on, it got like proggy and seventies and clean vocals and you know. Yeah, they, awesome. they love seventies prog and, and oh yeah, they do and stuff like that. Kind of yeah. like how kind of like how Opeth changed and evolved too. Yeah, not not too dissimilar. Yeah, mm -hmm. Amorphous stayed a little heavier, I think. But yeah. Yeah, overall, yeah, yeah very. But yeah, good, yeah, good yeah. analogy. Mm -hmm. cool. Thank you. All right, Rich, your number two. All right. Well, we're staying in Finland. I think this is probably my second favorite power metal band. I think it's close. Like they keep changing, but it's Stradivarius. Mm. Ooh. Always love their lyrics. Very positive, uplifting, spirited. You know, always makes you feel good. You guys know they've been around since 89? Yeah, a long time. Mm -hmm. first, wow. album came out in 80, first album came out in 89, Fright Night. But the lyrics to this song, have you ever heard Destiny? If you don't, Even if you don't know them, anybody else? I have. I don't know that, that album. I know the band, but not that particular album. I mean, talk about just like a heavy, spirited, feel good, a little bit sad song. It's kind of like a power metal song that goes into a almost a ballad towards the end, right, Pete? But the lyrics, that, all their lyrics, I always love their lyrics. Nice variety to uh, even kind of new age earthy sometimes as well. But the title track to the album, Destiny, the lyrics are, let your spirit free through window of your mind, unchain your soul from hate, all you need is faith. I control my life, I am the one. You control your life, but don't forget your destiny. It's time to say goodbye. I know it'll make you cry. You make your destiny. I know you'll find the way. Pretty awesome. Right? Yeah, most, most of their lyrics are, are kind of are like that. They're, they're very uplifting, I think. Yeah, very <laughs> spirited, makes you feel good, positive. I saw them in Portugal, Rich, in 2019 at Vagos Metal Fest. Oh, nice. Yeah, they performed. <laughs> <laughs> I saw them at, um, I saw them in America a couple of times and I saw them at Vakken actually nice. in 2003. So that was for Elements, I think, part one or part two. I forgot which one. 
Yeah, so but it was Timo was still in the band back then. Yeah. Yeah, he was. That was the last album, right around that era. Yeah, I only uh, saw them once. I saw them at BB King's once. I think you were at that show, Rich. Yeah, they don't come here that often. It's too bad they don't come here that often. No. You know, yeah, they have a bigger audience in Europe on because they aren't yeah. great. They you, yeah, they're pretty big over there. But you want a power metal band that's not one dimensional, also a little bit proggy too, with great lyrics that make you feel good, that are also kind of new agey as well. Check out Stradivarius. Good choice. All right, Ryan. All right, so I'm, I'm going to move on from Finland, uh, but I'm going to piggyback on what Nick said for like uh, <clears throat> folky lyrics, like folklorish. So we're going to go to Slovakia, a yeah, country we don't visit too often. And uh, we're going to pick a Slovakian heavy black metal band that uh, Nick and myself have actually see, seen. So I'm in Brooklyn uh, called, I'm going to, I'm going to, if anybody speaks Slovakian, I apologize for butchering this fucking album title. But I'm going to do my best. Uh, the band's Malakarpetan. And the album is called, this is their third album, Krupinski Oni. Uh, I'm sure I butchered that. I haven't heard of a fucking thing Ryan has said well, all night. That's, that's why I'm here. So on the, back, on, on the back, there's a picture of in the woods <laughs> with capes and shit. Yeah. So, uh, not one. I love that. I love that. Well, that's why I'm here. <laughs> Amazing. So, these guys, they write, uh, it's, 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 it's not that, like the first band I mentioned, like little horror movie stuff, but they write about, uh, Slovakian folklore and witchcraft and stuff. And uh, actually, instead of describing it to you, they came with this great little lyric book and, uh, English is a second language as Nick said. So the, every song has the lyrics printed in Slovakian and English side by side. How about that? That's fucking nice. Uh, I mean, okay. I mean, the, the translation's immaculate. So there's, there'd be a lyricist and singer, Adam, uh, extremely fluent in English too, because everything's very fluent. So I'm going to just read it in the front of the booklet. It has a little uh, little dedication. It basically, it says, uh, Krupin, uh, Krupinski Onha, which means the fires of Krupinja, is a concept story based on real happenings that occurred in the town of Krupinja during the 17th century amidst the numerous witchcraft trials that swept Europe across those days. So I would like to thank Marie... I cannot pronounce this name. There are two individuals. I don't want to butcher names for their 1979 uh, book, which led to the creation of this album. This music is meant to conjure up happenings from the story and follows the scenic notes in the lyrics directly. Therefore, sit back with the intoxicant of choice and let your visions be carried upon a nightly steed to the other world of he who walks in the shadows of nature. And then each song is like this, these little stories of witchcraft and you know, like this Slovakian uh, folklore. Uh, and they have these little notes between them, like little uh, cutaways almost, which aren't sung, but kind of like contextualize the lyrics. Uh, it's fucking great. And, you know, it, it goes into all these details about uh, basically that subject. Uh, the album's only, it's only got five songs. So they really, really like uh, develop each of these songs, you know, they're, pretty, they're longer songs. So uh, it's not like the first band, Cultist de Ghouls, I was describing had more of a... Uh, almost like a play with different characters and stuff this doesn't really take that tack this just you know we're going to relay some old slovakian folklore which is cool because i don't know about you guys but i didn't know fuck all about slovakian folklore so it's almost like a little history lesson to read this stuff too and it's just fascinating stuff uh so obviously like he said he pulls it from these uh his, this, this book so it's very uh i'd like to say historically based but it really you know it obviously embellishes it to make it you know musically lyrics too so you're not like reciting text out of a, a textbook basically but yeah, it's just awesome album. They have three albums uh, and each album they've gotten a little more into it. The second album kind of delved into Slovakian folklore a little more. And this one, he's like, he really dedicated it to a specific thing, these witchcraft trials from a couple hundred years ago. And the music is kind of like a little Merciful Fate, a little black metal, uh, a lot of like old school 80s guitar solos, but the vocals are harsh. So I don't know, it's it's, it's unusual, uh, unusual band. It's kind of one of those bands that you almost like just listen to them. You might like them, you might not, but uh, the lyrics are fucking great. I really appreciate the effort they put into it. So, and stuff like that's just cool because there's eight billion zillion bands singing about witches and Satan and stuff, and that's fine. You know, that's what most of that music's about. You know, I'm not going to knock on that because obviously I, I got a million of those albums myself. But it's cool when you see a band's like, now nah, we're going to put some real effort into like a specific theme and like kind of like you know our own little regional slant on it as a Slovakian band. You know. They have a whole basically cultural heritage they can draw on. So there's no need to be like, ah, Jesus, Satan, you know, 
the same, you know, beat the same fucking dead horse into the ground like 8 million other bands do. So these guys really kind of went about it in their own little way. And uh, awesome band, awesome album. Uh, they're wearing capes. Fucking great, you know. So. <laughs> you know what this does, right? It, like when you talk about something like this, like it really emphasizes the importance of the physical product in our music. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, all yeah it music. does. Yeah, because this is, uh, think about it, you, you'd be getting so much less if you just downloaded that on Spotify or something. Well, look at this. The, the gatefold is this yeah, beautiful fucking painting of this, this girl in the woods. She's got a torch, you know, the trees. It's all kind of like uh, scary shit going on there. You know, I don't want to get the reflection going on here, but yeah, like this, you know, and, and to have the book with the original lyrics and English translation and like all the little additional context that, yeah, this, yeah. this definitely, uh, if you're just listening to this on Spotify, you're missing like half of the experience, you know, the kind of just, you don't have to read along with it, but it really adds something to it, you know, for me, for me to read along. Well, with it. It's it, like that with so much heavy metal music, right? The artwork yeah. is almost as important, you know, the artwork and the, the liner notes and totally. everything, and the lyric sheets and the, the pictures that are inside with the lyrics are as important as your experience of living, um, listening to the music and reading the lyrics, you know? Absolutely. And like these guys, they did it right. You know, this is a big gatefold vinyl, you know, it's got the booklet. So they definitely didn't, you know, skimp on the stuff. They give you the full product and it works out too, because... It, this kind of music for me that it, it needs that you know so great album great band great lyrics i'm going with this, this is my number two Malakotan from slovakia what do you think sydney you think you'll you'll know ryan's number one not a damn chance you See, he, he fooled back? everybody here because when he started with his first pick he started talking about black sabbath so and, sydney you know hungarian folklore right i mean you know you study everybody naturally yeah. I, I uh figure that every time i get on this i will not know any of ryan's picks <laughs> we'll take not that bet you don't know my first pick we'll see how that goes but uh, no uh see because like at least like like nick like he's got his staples so i may not be super familiar with all of them but i'm like he's probably gonna pick that person with ryan it's like it could be fucking anything you don't I know. Have no idea. <laughs> like it's like Destroyer 666 is like, I know like maybe sometimes it's up there, but like other than that, I'm like, what's going on? Yeah, I got. <laughs> could be any, could be any. Yeah, sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. <laughs> but I mean, I love it. Like it's, you teach me, you teach me a lot of stuff. I don't, I don't mean to say that in like a. Oh no, I uh, get you. Yeah, I get Condescending you. or like annoying way. It's just like, it's just the, the stuff you pull out. I'm like, oh my God, I don't even know that stuff exists. So. Yeah, exactly. Mix it up a little bit. Yeah, but I'm it's cool. It. It's cool. I and I. And I go, I actually do check out some of it too when I get off, you know, I like, awesome. I'm like very curious. So. Um, it's into your number two. Okay. Um, so this is less, uh, I guess it's an artist, but more of a specific song that I, I don't know if that's cheating or if I, you know, it, but it's a specific song. Um, and I, I do like this, this artist, other lyrics as well, but this song specifically is what I like could not do something without lyric with lyrics and not include this um it's not metal by any means it's not even in the hard rock metal genre um but i had to go with billy joel vienna as one of my <laughs> all-time favorite it's one of my all-time favorite songs um i won't get super personal here but as somebody you know i do struggle with a lot of anxiety in my life i'm very like always want to get to the next thing i'm always you know looking for you know, uh, whatever I can accomplish next or, you know, et cetera. Um, I'm a perfectionist to a fault. And I remember hearing this song, uh, I had known the song, but I remember, you know, years ago, actually listening to the lyrics and like, ever since I heard it, I was like, this is like my, it's, it felt like somebody out there also understood me. Um, and I mean, just, you know, slow down, you're doing fine. It can't be everything you want to be before your time. Although it's so romantic on the borderline tonight. Too bad, but it's a life you lead. You're so ahead of yourself that you forgot what you need. Though you can see when you're wrong, you know you can't always see when you're right. Like, it's just, I mean, one of my all-time favorite lines is, um, you know, you've got your passion, you've got your pride, but don't you know that only fools are satisfied? Um, it's it's just incredible. You know, I, uh, I can't say uh, that I'm, you know, I, I like a lot of other Billy Joel songs. I'm not a Billy Joel super fan. Uh, but that song specifically has always really spoken to me. Um, every time I hear it, it just like brings a tear to my eye because it's it's something that I feel like I can relate to so much. Um, and it's almost like a, a comfort song for me. 
sometimes uh you know not to get you know too personal but um Sid, yeah. what do you think what do you think vienna stand, means in the song because i just uh, read through the lyrics real quick do you think it means death or do you think it means satisfaction because he says think, no matter what slow down vienna's waiting for you yeah i don't vienna, know That's, you know what i mean like no matter what you're in the it, same place maybe I, i've always been wondering that myself i feel like to like it means it means it could mean different things like you know to different people like maybe some people do think think it's death i think i've always interpreted it as like some you know peace of mind maybe you know like you know oh, a, yeah yeah you know like eventually you know nothing's going to be perfect you know you're you, you can only do so much you can only be so much before you know you go through life experiences and you know, to get to who eventually you will be and like eventually you will get there and it's going to happen in due time, you know, so it's going to, it's going to be waiting for you when, when you're ready for it. Um, but I think that that's a good question. I, I've, I've wondered that myself. Um, and I, I think it's the great thing about lyrics, right? You know, it's so subjective. And so um, it can mean so many things to different people, which is cool. And half the fun is wondering. Yeah. yeah. And I love the, I love the artists too, who don't tell you, you know, mm -hmm. they're like, it's, it's the, the classic answer of like, you know, people will make this what, what they want to make of it. But, you know, I think the mystery, like you said, Nick, is the best part. Yep. Nobody will ever know what the fuck a holy diver is. <laughs> yeah. And what the Dio fuck is, is not around a town. So. And anybody who why says they he, know, they're full of shit. Why is Nobody he, uh, oh, why is he down in the midnight sea? You know, like, yeah. I want to know what's going on with Nobody that. Nobody will ever know. Yeah, it's so, yeah, that's Billy Joel. I mean, I, I I love a lot of Billy Joel songs, and I think his, I don't know what it is. I, I think like if you grew up and lived in the New York area for most of your life, whether you like the style of music that Billy Joel plays or not, I think some part of you has to really appreciate his music, his songs, his lyrics, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's just like because I, I talk to people who are you know, from other countries and on the West Coast and they're like a Billy Joel, you know, whatever. But it's like, if you're from here, you get it, yeah. you know? Captain totally. Jack. Captain Jack is one of my favorite. Oh my God, Captain oh. Jack is so good. from an Italian restaurant. That, that one just... Oh. Yeah, he's from an Italian restaurant. Red bread. That yeah. puts you in the mood. Yeah, to a stranger. Such oh, a yeah. He's awesome. And I'm I like, I'm not a big fan of his music for the most part, but yeah, a lot of his lyrics really get, get you, you know? Only the good die young, you know? It's like... Oh, yeah. All right, that's Baden it. Song. So we're gonna rank Billy Joel songs. Billy Joel songs. <laughs> <laughs> bottle of reds, a bottle of whites, number one. <laughs> bottle of reds, <laughs> that's number one. <laughs> we just started Sydney. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, <laughs> all right, my number two is a band that uh, I started listening to when I was really young. And it was one of the first bands that I ever started like paying attention to lyrics with. And uh, the band is Kansas. And oh, basically, again, nice. you know, wow. kind of a mix of lyrical themes about fantasy and stuff like uh, the Great Plains and very like Americana type themes. Uh, some songs early on in their catalog dealt with kind of like, uh, you know, just rock and roll lifestyle themes. But then as like the band started to get uh, on, like throughout the late 70s into the 80s, you know, their main lyricist, Kerry Livgren, their guitarist and keyboard player, uh, started, you know, it came to Morning and Christian. So some of their stuff took on like kind of like a spiritual uh, slant. But um, I wanted to read a couple, a couple things here from uh, Icarus Born on Wings of Steel. This is the Mask album, by the way. Um, so what do we got here? So early in the morning sunlight, soaring on the wings of dawn. Here I'll live and die with my wings in the sky, and I won't come down no more. Higher than a bird, I'm flying crimson skies of ice and fire. Born on wings of steel, I have so much to feel, and I won't come down no more. Dun, 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 dun. Um, yeah, just really, really great songs. And, you know, albums like Left Overture and Point of No Return and uh, Song for America has like a good mix of all that's kind of so cool about Kansas. And, and you know, they had a few different lyricists too. Carrie Lugman wrote a good chunk of their lyrics, but also Steve Walsh did as well. So did Robbie Steinhardt, the late Robbie Steinhardt. So uh, yeah, Kansas, number two for me. Good read on all their albums. That's a good pick. Thank you. All right, Lynn, you're number one. Um, holding that thought. I gotta get something. Uh-oh, props. Well, her favorite album is Laundry, the laundry behind her. That's yeah. nobody's favorite album. No, hey, that's my 
clothes? It's not laundry. That's my clothes rack. Beatles. It's Ringo and Paul. It's the Beatles. It's the it's Beatles. The Beatles. <laughs> Hello, John. We all live in the <laughs> Um, um, this so one, I, yeah. I chose the Beatles because everything that they do, right? I mean, the Lennon McCartney thing, it's just, for me, it's like simple, powerful, meaning, um, meaningful. I would sing Beautiful Boy to my son when he was a baby over and over again in the crib, you know, um, Let It Be, right? I know John, I guess, wrote that for his mom, or no, Paul, I think, wrote that for his mom. Uh, but he said it's left to interpretation. So I think of it as Mother Mary, you know, like what I'm praying or whatever, you know, like, so that song, A Day in the Life, Long and Winding Road, Blackbird, Hey Jude, I mean, just hit after hit after hit. And I mean, everything they touched turned to gold. The writing was just amazing. Their dynamic was amazing. I just saw Ringo a few weeks ago. And then I just saw Paul um, at MetLife Stadium. I saw two Beatles in the past four weeks. Um, oh my God. It just, it blew me away. It really blew me away to be that close to a beetle. Um, a beetle. But definitely a beetle. Yes. A beetle. A beetle. But yeah, I mean, for me, that is uh, definitely, they're my favorite. Um, I was very close to a beetle today. I unfortunately stepped on him, but. Uh, oh, well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> You're funny. Bad about my beetles. Don't you talk bad about my beetles? Oh, I, I love Maybe, Of course. You know what? No, so now that I'm going back and I'm, you're saying Kansas and Billy Joel, right? Like, so in that Vienna song is absolutely one of my top two out of the uh, Billy Joel catalog. But I didn't think to go that deep in, into regular music, but the Eagles, I just saw them for my birthday. Great lyrics. All of their yeah. songs are hits. Yeah. Unbelievable lyrics. Um, Stone Sour, Rush, Overkill, Megadeth, Zebra, Man of War. Uh, Elton John, right, due to Bernie Taupin, which who also wrote for Alice Cooper and Hart and Starship and Rod Stewart and whatever, but the, the list goes on and on and on. So I thank you for, for bringing this kind of to light for all of us. And it kind of made me think. I just really couldn't give a definitive because it really, to me, depends on the mood I'm in, the era of my life, what I'm going through for me to have the lyrics at home. But there's so many good lyrics, and I'm sure I'm going to write the lyrics down and be like, oh, what about this one? What about that one after this ends? But for me, this is my my number one. I'm sure a lot of people in the comments will be talking about the Beatles. So There is one Beatles song. They if they don't like, like the, I don't want to hear any BS about not liking them. Oh, they, there's one Beatles song. I'd like to know what the hell they're singing about. I don't I know. Like to be they, under the sea, an octopus's garden in the sea. Yeah, what, you know, what is going on there? What is that about? Being an octopus is They're with the Holy Diver. They don't know. It's called LSD, Ryan. That's what's yeah. going on there. <laughs> I know that. I know. <laughs> oh, I love the song. It's a great fucking song. I'm just, uh, it's like a Saturday morning cartoon. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, Lynn said it perfectly. She goes, it's just simple, especially like earlier on, simple, sometimes <laughs> whimsical lyrics, but they really yeah. worked, right? And that's what they did. Oh, they were hold your hand. Like Van Halen. Right, Van Halen, fun summertime. I'm your ice cream man. Stop yeah. me when you're passing by. It's like, okay, but it was fun. You remembered it when you were a kid. You were partying to it. You were hanging out. You were dancing. You know. Yep. She loves crazy. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. All right, Nick, your final choice for today. My favorite lyric is, "You can dance if you want to." You can leave your leave friends. Your friends. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. And if no. your friends don't dance, if they don't yeah, dance. Yeah, that's it. Good night. <laughs> no. Um, no, so my favorite, uh, my favorite lyricist is uh is is the aforementioned Alan Averill, whose uh, main band is Primordial from Ireland. Um, for my money, he has written the the greatest lyrics um that I have encountered. Um a lot of gravitas, a lot of uh, you know seriousness um definitely not lighthearted. um i'm going to read the lyrics to where greater men have fallen Ooh, which is the title song. track of their album yeah i figure i'll that do that one song right there um for those who buried their sons under bone white crosses for those who saw their daughter's virtues taken by invading forces they promised the century to you and all you did was count the dead pray for merciful release in the longest and darkest night where greater men have fallen 
here we stand guard where greater men have fallen until the end of time. They made you build your tomb with your very own hands, ground your kin to dust in the dark satanic mill of progress and called it liberty. Seems the lands of the free are born of the cold and empty grave and the myths of liberty bind our wrists like slaves. Uh, you will always bury your sons under broken barren promises. The heart of your motherland will be ripped from her chest where greater men have fallen. We are ready to die. So as you can see, I'm not fucking around. Really? <laughs> I like <Really? laughs> I, I like these types of serious, you know, ta talking about nationhood and history and, you know, loss. And, you know, honestly, the, 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 the flagship lyric that people come back to with with this band is the coffin ships, which it talks about the um, this guy's they're from Dublin. Yeah. And uh, the coffin ships talk about the uh, the Irish famine of the 1840s, um, which precipitated so much change in that country. And um, that's <laughs> one that, oh, boy, oh, boy. I mean, whew. so, um, yeah, lyrics like that. Um, we're lightning to split the sun who, who would pray to anything but the mountain and wish for anything but lightning to split the night. Uh, who would praise anything but the sun above that brings each dawn and our radiant day. He has a, a relationship with a heathen uh, belief of, you know, like no God, no master kind of thing that uh, really very um, poetically uh, gets that idea across. So that really resonates with me. Um, yeah. And he's in a couple of bands and all the lyrics are good, but I'd say primordial is, is, his main band and the most um frequent uh lyrics that he writes and they generally revolve around these themes uh you know the end of the roman empire the fall of all empires um i highly recommend you know once again you could read the lyrics and never listen to a note and still get something out of it so for me primordial is the, are the kings the kings of lyrics in my world I love them. I didn't even pick it because I knew I knew they were going to be your number one. Without thanks, yeah. Should I do honorable mentions? If you guys want to rattle some off, it's fine. Yeah, sure. Steve Harris, Rush, um, Greg Graffin from Bad Religion, which was more about my formative years. But uh, wow, being 15 years old and hearing uh, you know evolution is how everything came about and religion's crap and don't believe in God. You know, for me that was that was important. Um, and uh, oh geez, there's a few in my head that I lost. Typo negative, Pete Steele. I think uh, some of the best mm. lyrics around, you really get into them, phenomenal. Whether he's talking about horror or talking about being depressed or um, everything in between. Um, and there's many others. Uh, so many. That's what's great about music. Anathema, My Dying Bride, beautiful lyrics. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Rich. All right. My one is uh, the band that has been my all-time favorite band. First band I took as my, my favorite band as soon as I heard them. Aside from all the other bands I was listening to, whether it was Sabbath or Priest or Sabotage or Saxon or Megadeth or Metallica or Slayer or whoever. When I first heard them, this, they automatically went up to my top slot and they've been there ever since. So it's Iron Maiden. Um, everything we talked about from some of these other bands they talk about they got lyrics based on novels fiction fantasy sci-fi history everything go from like the simplicity of or not simplicity but the basics of like maybe iron maiden and killers but then you go to number of the beast and peace of mind and then you got power slave and then you go somewhere in time and then there's the story of the seventh son of the seventh son you know and then they came back with brave new world and they came out with that and dance of death and the matter of life and death. So every album is a whole nother like book to open up, to read, you know, another story, another epic to dive into. So they've always been an eye, my number one. Never a shortage of things to read in the Iron Maiden catalog, right? Yeah. Things to learn, you know, stuff based on novels, poetry, whatever it is, even just the imagination stuff from killers. And I showed this before, but, great version of i got you know i never would have read, read samuel taylor coleridge if it wasn't for iron maiden you know i never would have got yeah. into poetry that so great yeah. yep good choice good choice and then the honorables or what yeah All right. yep sabotage is right up there they were they were in my five they're right there um priest of course overkill always loved their lyrics very creative you know variety of topics too even just fun simple thrashy lyrics they have sometimes you know too about 
the pit or whatever it may be about being a garden thrasher. state garden state yeah garden state or whatever raise the dead or uh, yeah. power surge or electro violence or time to kill you know they always had fun tongue in cheek with their their thrashy lyrics you know but they have variety too like a song like the years of decay or uh what else is on that album not birth attention um oh my god it's after years of decay or before it. somebody help me elimination was that not eliminate. That's on that album. Um, Which one had Power Surge on it? Power Surge. Is, Taking album. Taking oh. over. Um, Taking over. Yeah. What is it? Power Surge is on Taking Over, right? Yeah. That's on Taking Over. Oh yeah. Um, oh, it's gonna bother me now. It's on Years of Decay. Oh, hold on. I'll tell you. Song. It's all right. Time to Kill, Elimination. I hate nothing to die for. Playing with spiders. Birth of Tension. Who tends so, the fire? Who tends the fire? Yeah. 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 Another one like that. Shit. You know. So they always had a good variety with their lyrics, aside from being a thrash band, you know. Uh, also, Wasp, love Blackie Lawless's writing on the Crimson Idol. Yes. Fuck yeah. Wasp has so many great lyrics. Always love their lyrics. And Journey. Well, I love how he threw it. And Journey. And Journey. And Journey. <laughs> and since Cindy mentioned it, also Billy Joel. But we're not we're not in that realm, so maybe that's another topic. Colin, hey, man at work. Men at work. Say man of war or men at work. I men at man work. war at work. work? You said men, men of war at work. <laughs> man of war at work. <laughs> man of war at work. Sitting in my room and I'm dripping sweat. I don't have AC and I feel like I'm in the Bronx and it's 110. I'm in the Bronx over here. The humidity is awful out. Yeah. I'm done. It is, it is I humid. Two shit. hours when I'm going to pass out. <laughs> Oof. All right, Ryan. All right. Well, uh, Sydney said she's not going to ever know my first band, so I'll take that bet. <laughs> And uh, so when you said this, uh, best lyrics, I wanted to pick some different stuff. But the number one choice was always locked in. There was only one band it could always be, hands down, my favorite lyrics by a fucking million miles. And that band is Bull Oyster Cult. Uh, wow. Wow, oh, nice one. These Ever guys. I know. Okay, well, <laughs> so you these guys, the uh, <laughs> they've had outside lyric writers come in. They've had sci-fi authors come in. Uh, mm. They've had a lot of different people write them. Uh, the guys themselves have written a lot of lyrics. Uh, man, they, they've covered horror, sci-fi, fantasy, just flights of the imagination. They've covered every, you know, God. they wrote a song about Godzilla. Uh, they've covered every possible topic. Uh, the lyrics are very poetic. They have all kinds of songs especially in the early days where you read them, you're like, I have no fucking idea what they're talking about, but it's very evocative imagery, like a song like Astronomy, um, one of the earlier albums. Uh, no idea what the fuck they're talking about, but the images it cures up are amazing. Sorry, conjures up are amazing. So hands down, to me, the best lyrics in any rock band. Uh, so this is from their newest album, uh, The Symbol Remains. Cool. And, uh, and, and again, this album, I mean, they're not really a biker rock band, but they've written for my, for me the best biker rock songs ever, like about uh, you know uh, Golden Age of Leather, amazing song about bikers, a Transnomicon, a great song, and they've written a whole shit ton of great songs about vampires, uh, Nosferatu, mm -hmm. I Love the Night. Uh, mm -hmm. They've never written a song about biker vampires though, so maybe on the next fucking album. <laughs> but uh, but I mean this album too, this oh, album please. is uh, amazing. It's absolutely amazing, and. Uh, I was just like, I was trying to pick one Bloister Cult song because they have so many and they cover so many topics. I'm like, oh, it's a good song. So on this album, uh, the symbol remains the fourth song. It's called Nightmare Epiphany. And the lyrics are written by the guitarist, uh, Buck Dharma. And it's a story about this girl that has an intense fever. She falls into a uh, 70s intense fever dream. She can't wake up, almost kind of in a coma. And it goes into all this evocative imagery of, uh, it, it, I'll just read it off here. It's a Dahlia floated like chimney ash. Up into a shredded sky, it was raining acidic trash. On the moon, there craw crawled a fly. Burning Teslas were driving by. At their wheels, evil clowns. And from a darkness, there came a howling. And somehow it called her down. And then it just keeps going until she's stuck in this nightmare and all this horrific imagery. And then at the end, it's, uh, then Dahlia woke in clinging sheets. The fever broke, but the dream remained. She couldn't forget it. Though a season passed, she wouldn't let it slip away. And then she met him down at the mall on the edge of the parking lot. Seems he went to her school. She was popular. He was not. I remember he told her then, I'll never forget the dream of chains. You tried to help me, tried to descend, offered me something besides my pain. And now I found you in this concrete world that only fools believe is real. See, I knew that you belonged to me in my nightmare epiphany. 
So she meets somebody that she dreamed about in real life. And he somehow knew about what was going on in her dream. And he's like, I knew you actually belonged to me this whole time. So it ends on this very dark note. And the band always did that, like kind of like happy sometimes. And then whoop, hard left turn into this weird, like kind of horror movie, like dark shit. Like you, you never know what you get with these guys. Uh, every album that I own, which is all of them, uh, has really good lyrics. Uh, early on, they were a little weirder, very evocative imagery, very like visual imagery. But yeah, when Pete said this is a topic, I'm like, well, number one is going to be Blue Oyster Cold because to me, there's no, no, and I obviously like, I love Iron Maiden. I love Rush. I love all these bands with great lyrics, but these guys, I read the lyrics, I'm like, God damn, this is just like, it makes you sit and think about it. You know, you're just sitting there like, what the fuck were they talking about? Or if it is kind of, if you can translate it, it really kind of like gets inside, you know, and kind of sticks with you. So, uh, yeah, every album, every song, great. Uh, but this one, obviously, this new album is fantastic if you haven't heard it. So, now number one is definitely Blue Oyster Cult. Uh, so, for honorable mentions, I got two. Uh, I talk about them a lot. I think I talked about them last week. But uh, Voivod from Canada. Uh, this is their fourth album, Dimension Hatros. This is a concept album, but in the spirit of the band, this scientist develops this machine to travel beneath through, through dimensions. And he's traveling to different worlds. And these, these, you know, these guys called the chaos mongers, they kind of get, a, you know, on his trail. And it's like leads to this whole story, the sci-fi story about him trying to outwit these guys and escape them and go into different dimensions and shit. It's fucking wild. And uh, you know what? Butch is in here. So I'm going to say these guys have really, really damn good lyrics. And I'm surprised no one's mentioned them. And that's uh, Thin Fucking Lizzie. Uh, Thin Lizzie, yeah. Phil, Phil Lynott was an amazing, amazing lyricist. All you know, I, I just picked one song, and this is their uh, album, uh, Black Rose. And it opens up with, you know, you guys want to talk about, like, feel-good songs that kind of like, yeah, you know, make you want to lift more at the gym, kind of put you in a positive mood. Uh, the first song on this album is called Do Anything You Want To. And, man, this song just uh, just hits you right in the guts. Uh, my version does not have lyrics. So I cannot read the lyrics to you. But... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I recommend, yeah. A big build up. It's like, oh. Man. And now uh, you got to look them up yourself. Sorry. But that's what the internet's for. Yeah, but no, uh, Thin, Thin Lizzy, amazing. Because even like the biggest hit, obviously, were the boys is back in town. Everybody knows that song. Like local radio stations play it three times an hour. But lyrically, that's a great fucking song. It tells this whole story, you know, it like kind of brings you into the scene, you know, and like you hear that. I never get tired of that song, like Stairway to Heaven. And every time yeah. I hear it, I'm like, man, this is just really good writing. The way they capture the scene, it's kind of like funny, sarcastic, you know. You know, she just got up on the table and slapped in the face. We just fell about the place. Yeah, that's, that's good writing. Uh, Phil was an amazing lyricist. Uh, yeah, Thin Lizzy. I should. I was almost debating uh, mentioning him, but I wasn't sure if Butch was going to be on or not. So I kept him off the list. But definitely a really, really good band for lyrics. So that's my two honorable mentions. Very cool. As Lynn is slowly melting down below. Lynn is yeah. Schwitzen. <laughs> Schwitzen no, away nothing. I'm like dying. <laughs> It's Schwitzen over there. Like, hey, Butch and Cooper in here. We had to be freaking midnight. <laughs> I'd have to change and do an outfit change and put my pajamas on. The hell? <laughs> Lynn, is, Lynn is the Chris Allo of this evening. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, it's been almost 10. I'm like, all right. Yeah, Chris, uh, Chris is going to be it. losing his mind. <laughs> I'm going to make mine quick. Yeah. Be. I want to like pace back and forth. I can't just sit in a chair. It's freaking me out. I still have to eat dinner, so I'm going to make mine quick. Let's right. wrap it up, folks. <laughs> Um, so for me, obviously my last pick had to be Alice Cooper. I will die on the hill that he is one of the most underrated ballad writers out there. He is unappreciated when it comes to his ballads, especially, and I will forever die on that hill. Um, but, uh, I, what Lynn? I said, please don't die. <laughs> But you mentioned that he uh, he did write with Bernie Taupin, which one of my favorite albums of all time. He did write with he did write that one with Bernie, um, of course, from the inside, which I mentioned last week. Um, and I'm not going to sit here and say that he wrote all of these songs by himself because you know he's done a lot of co-writing over the years. But at the end of the day, it's still Alice, um, and he's credited. So I'm going to die on the hill that he is an underrated ballad writer. Um, but my all-time favorite Alice Cooper song, which I think I mentioned last week as well is how you gonna see me now and you know I, i'm not gonna sit here also and say that his lyrics are extremely deep but they're they i think that they work very well together and when you hear them um i don't know i've i always have thought that like you know 
especially in the 70s these were like just such great songs um one two uh the one of the songs off of um alice cooper goes to hell i never cry is one of my favorite alice cooper songs uh you know take away take away my eyes sometimes i'd rather be blind break a heart break a heart of stone open it up but don't you leave it alone because that's all i've got to give to you believe me babe it ain't been used my heart's a virgin and it, it's never been tried and you know i'll never cry um, and it's just like, you know, nothing really super deep there, but like, I've always thought, you know, I don't know. I, I've, I've always loved uh, the lyrics that he's done. Um, another one of my favorites might as well be on Mars off of Hey Stupid. Um, I'm on the roof and I'm staring at the stars, looking down at all the cars. I can see you in the window of your favorite corner bar, but to reach you is just too far and I might as well be on Mars. Like, I don't know. They're just fun lyrics. I love them. In the context of the music, they're even better. Um, what matters is that you love him right That's yeah what I, I love him i will just forever die on the hill he is an underrated ballad writer and um the lyrics i'm from the inside especially because like i said he did write with bernie Taupin, who is an incredible lyricist um and i think he added so much to that album too that um you know i don't think that album would be what it was without uh bernie and, uh, you know, I, I think that he was just a welcomed addition to that. So, uh, you know, aside from the fact that he gave Alice Cooper a Coke addiction, but other than that, <laughs> um, you know, he was, a, he was a welcomed addition. So Alice Cooper, forever my number one. And me, as time goes on, I really appreciate the earlier lyrics, which were all kind of very gothic-y and horror, yep. and very serious and dramatic and stuff. I think those are really cool too, so. Yeah, like Second Coming, he wrote that it was all like, they were very religious because he's, you know, he's very religious. So the early stuff off of like um, Love It to Death, very, uh, very uh, religious based. And then I also just remembered um, my high school yearbook quote was a lyric from a song called Living, which is off of Pretties for You. It's very obscure. Uh, I Not a lot of Alice Cooper fans, I think, really dive too much into Pretties for You. It's like, my favorite review of that record is, is a tragic waste of plastic. Um, but my favorite true. lyric, <laughs> my favorite lyric is from a song called Living, and it says the only real person you need to know is you. And that was my true. yearbook quote. So very true. I agree with that. All right, to take us out here, my number one, as it was on the show I did with Martin a couple weeks ago, is Rush. Neil Peart. Whether it's sci-fi, fantasy, or very personal on um, stuff going on in Neil's life, uh, I think the lyrics of Rush have always been very thoughtful, sometimes very complex, sometimes hard to understand, sometimes not. But uh, it, this also, kind of along with Kansas, one of the first bands where I ever actually sat down and I was like, oh yeah, let me start reading about the Temples of Syrinx and about Bitor and about Xanadu and all this kind of cool stuff. So uh, yeah, you never know. Maybe like six months from now, this will be Sydney's second favorite band behind Alice Cooper. You never know. <laughs> Lyrically, I Sydney, that's all. You know that people call into the radio station that I work at <laughs> and I play Rush and, and say, oh, it's your favorite band. I get texts, I get calls. It's, it's forever following me. I should have I never know. admitted it. It should have been kept a dirty secret. Totally. Now it's a thing. Now it's a thing. Plenty of people keep dirty secrets nowadays, so you could have added to the list. Oh, <laughs> uh, well. That's all right, Sydney. You never know. Maybe one day. Look at, look at how long it took me to get into King's X. Like decades. So it, it may, they may click with you one of these days. You never know. And then you'll yeah. be like, wow, this is what I was missing out on. All these I keep years. trying. I keep trying. I mean, I, I still, I think, you know, I will never um, have to hear Tom Sawyer again, uh, no matter what. Uh, yeah. But, you know, maybe. Something like Jacob's Ladder or Subdivisions. Subdivisions, yeah. Yeah, I would think maybe like a, an album like Signals or Grace Under Pressure or even... I'm just going to Red Sector A. Red yeah, Sector. That, 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 might, yeah. that might be a little easier for you, yeah. Because, I, you know, maybe the early stuff is just a little too complex and his vo vocals are a little too high-pitched, but as he got older and the music got a little less kind of dense, uh, his vocals kind of, you know, came down a little bit. That might be worth investigating. Yeah, I'll know. keep trying. Just I'll a keep thought. Trying. Just a thought. We'll keep trying. We'll, well, we'll keep going. Come on, so head against the wall. Yeah, a little more rush. Nick Franco, are you drinking a beer tonight? It's, well, yeah, we'll say it's a beer. Cheerio. It's, not, what it's is a it? cider. Oh, I was going to say, I know Nick a long time. I, I do not. not a beer guy, yeah. You don't drink no beer. 
about <laughs> Merchant's Daughter. Ah, okay. Somebody left it at my house. It's pretty good. There you go. Cool. So there you have it, everybody. Uh, our favorite five bands for their lyrics and some albums and things like that. So uh, let us know what uh, bands you really like based on the lyrics and put them in the comments below. And please remember to visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. All together. All the damn time. The Thanks damn, for watching. All the damn time. All the damn time. All all the the time. time. That's right. <laughs> all the damn time. I get up. I get right. We're gonna let Lynn. We're gonna we're gonna go now, so Lynn can uh, go, go to sleep down a little her bit. I'm not going to sleep. I just have to move. I can't. I'm gonna put her pajamas. <laughs> Where's pajamas? Guys, don't listen to her. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next week for another episode of the Hudson Valley Squares for Lynn Versace, Nick Franco, Rich Catino, Ryan Scal, Sydney Taylor, <laughs> IMP Pardo. See you all later on. And don't forget tomorrow in the proxy Tuesday. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Peace.